Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve of That Church, and we're here in chapter 20 of John's Gospel. And we're going to look at these, these, these top points as, as you know, I think God wants us to look at and see just a few more things in. Alright, so let's pray and we'll get right started, get right to it, right? Good morning. Um, Lord God, you are our Lord. We're always looking to you. We, we choose to look to you, to hear your thoughts, for you're always speaking to our heart. And we thank you for, for confirming those thoughts that you've spoken to all those that will hear today, or that will ever hear, and that you're confirming those thoughts with signs following from your word, from, from the preached word, from your spirit showing forth your goodness. We thank you for all this. And we look to you as our vital necessity for here and how we're to live out today. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we get right to this, uh, we are going to jump right into chapter 20. We, we want to look at something here today, just these events that take place. You, you have Mary... Go, that goes to the the tomb, sees the stone rolled away, and doesn't go in, doesn't go look at that point. It doesn't say that she does, but she runs back and tells two people, Simon Peter and John, right? The, the writer of this book. And, and here we see just a certain amount of competition here. <laughs> you see that, that uh, John outruns Peter and says so as well as peter gets there and just rushes right in john doesn't go in but peter goes in and they see something that that which they see causes john to believe it says it doesn't say anything about peter but because john is writing this it says that he sees and believes something now we're going to jump back to, to Psalms 16.10. In Psalm 16.10, it, it tells us something that they didn't so much believe, or they didn't put it together yet, um, as, as what they were, they were seeing, right? They were seeing something. All right, who moved my book of John, Psalms? <laughs> now, here it is. Psalm 1610 says this, For you will not abandon me in Sheol, the place of the dead, neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. Now, Jesus was raised from the dead before corruption kicked in. Or if it did, he was completely healed of it. One way or another, we see this. But let's read verse 9 right before that. It says, Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory, my inner self, rejoices. My body, too, shall rest and confidently dwell in safety. Now, his body was dwelling in safety from corruption. Do you see it? And, and here we, we put things together for a reason so that we see that we are not going to see, the, the real us is not going to see corruption, is not going to go to hell because we believe in Jesus. We believe that God raised him from the dead, and if we believe that, we are going to be raised. We're, we're raised now. We will never have the sting of death. All these things kind of get put together as we're watching this take place in Jesus, there's some really neat things that, that take place. Now, it says that right after this, Mary is hanging out by the tomb. After John and, and, uh, and uh, Simon Peter are gone, they went in and saw something. What did they see? And believe by. I wanted to cro cross that before I get to Mary. They saw this 
this linen cloth that was wrapped around Jesus' head still where it would have been whenever he was laying there? Did he just disappear? And and that's that that stayed there? Was it still in the circular circumference as if they the body just disappeared and you know it fell together? Or was it still round as if it was around his head? We don't know exactly what we saw, but it, it says it says this. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first, oh, let me, uh, uh, verse 7 of uh, John 20. But the burial napkin, the handkerchief was, which had been around Jesus' head, was not lying with the other linen cloths, but was still rolled up, wrapped round and round in a place by itself. And, and I would say it was in its place, or in where it was before, is, is the connotation there. But maybe it was folded. Maybe he took it off and folded it up really nice, the way Jesus would fold things whenever they were with him. Do you see some of these things? We don't know exactly all these things, but it says that... Um, then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first went into and he saw and was convinced and believed. Believed what? Believed that Jesus was raised from the dead. He was putting the scriptures together. He was putting things together and seeing that Jesus had been raised from the dead. He wasn't just taken out of his tomb. They, they were seeing signs that, you know, if the body was carried off, the, wouldn't the wrappings have went with him? They wouldn't have unwrapped him and then taken him, folded him up, put him aside, or, you know, unwrap the whole body and put him off to the side. There's, there's things here that we just step over, but we're not stepping today. We're stepping into, right? We're seeing these things. Now, as, as we go on to Mary, it says that, Mary remained standing outside the tomb, sobbing. Now, did she go with the boys? Well, they were running. She probably didn't run. She probably got there, and maybe they went off a different direction. However it happened, you don't see that Mary sees them, or has any discourse with them, but it went back again. Let's see, uh, the disciples went back to their homes. That That's a neat thing there, too. People say they didn't have houses to live in. Well, here, they're in, they're where? Where are they? Jerusalem. And they have homes in Jerusalem? Did they have homes in every city that they went to? I don't know. Seems seems kind of different that they've got homes. They, they went and bought homes in the midst of it or rented homes. However, they had money. They did things, right? But Mary remained standing uh, outside the tomb, sobbing. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. Now, when you look into a tomb, isn't it dark in there? How, how was it that Peter and James could see in there? Do they have a torch? Was there a torch already in there? Was there just natural light shining in there? Maybe it was facing the east. All of those good things come to play in all these things. She saw two angels in white sitting there. Now they're sitting there. Um, how are they sitting? With their legs crossed? You know, kind of looking at each other? Is the, the, the connotation that it gives here, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Now, not to everybody this is going to look this way, but look at it as this is as if there's uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Remember how the Ark of the Covenant looked? It had a seraphim at, at each side of the seat, right? And that was the presence 
when when we see the Ark of the Covenant, that's what you see. An angel on each side of the presence of that of that uh, Ark of the Covenant. Isn't that something neat to, to think about? As as we put these things together, you start seeing different things. Um, and they said to uh, to her, woman, why are you sobbing? <clears throat> they they don't see why we're sobbing. She she told them because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. She still doesn't get it. She doesn't doesn't see it all yet. But she saw the angels, and is just thinking they're peoples peoples that uh, are looking in there seeing where Jesus was or something on, on seeing this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not know and recognize it was Jesus now he was cloaked the different ideas there um, so he was must have been clothed he was stripped, remember? They took all of his clothing away. Now he's clothed in different clothing. <laughs> There's different things about all this. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying? So, as if it was a different kind of caring than what was going to be said next. And remember, we can't see into the Spirit unless God gives us the ability to see into the Spirit. She had the ability to see in the Spirit. She saw the angels. Something is happening here. And then, um, Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying so? For whom are you looking? Supposing that he was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have carried him away from here, Tell me where you have put him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, turning around, she said to him, in the Hebrew language, Rabboni, Master, an endearing Master. Oh, Lord. Uh, which means teacher or Master, right? Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me. Now, there's things that, that we see that Jesus was just coming out of the tomb, right? When, when this all was kind of transpiring, he's heading somewhere. Where is he going? To heaven, to present himself before the Father in heaven and take the blood that he poured out as an offering. Do you see that? poured it out on the mercy seat for you and me, all y'all. Every person in this planet was forgiven at that very moment. Now, those of us that believe and have, because we believe, and those that don't believe yet, let's just say it that way, and don't have yet, but they can have it, every one of them. All right. Now, Jesus can say Mary in, in a way that you, you know how your mom would call you, or your dad would call you, or, or your husband would call you, right? These, these things are, are really good. And then here we see Mary Magdalene sent out as, as a, a sent one, as a, an apostle to go carry a message to the to the 12 disciples, or to the 11 disciples, right? All right. So, as we see this, then on, on that same first day of the week, now, all of this transpired on that same day. So, we want to see that Jesus then went and, and uh, poured out his blood, did what he needed to do before and in the presence of God, and then comes and shows them, showed them his hands and his side, and then 
So I, I, I like to, to kind of give you the picture. So Jesus is clothed. What is he clothed? What is he wearing? And here he has to show, show him his side. Lift up his shirt. Show him his side. Show him his hands. Are they healed now? And there's just scars showing the places? Can, can you see through them? I don't know. So there's, there's a lot of neat things here. But this next thing that Jesus does, it says, Then Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. Why did he have to say it twice? Is he starting over? <laughs> They're all awestruck and wow, whoa, and, and somewhat beside themselves. But look, here, they were moved in a mood. All right, that's a good way to put it. Peace to you, just as the Father has sent me forth, so I am sending you. Now, now this part, you know, there's things that say this is where they got uh, born again. All right. It, what I like to see here is Jesus breathes on them. What did he do? <laughs> there, there's different ideas there, but let's look at this. The, the things that are more important. Receive, admit the Holy Spirit. That's what he says to him. That's what he breathed. He said something. Receive the Holy Spirit. Now, we can do that same thing. And I want to see as we do these same things, breathing has something to do with these things. Because you're, you're breathing out whenever you're talking, right? Okay. Now, having received the Holy Spirit and being led and directed by Him, if you forgive, just these are things Jesus is explaining to the disciples. And you're a disciple, right? So take this to yourself. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. Why does he say this next part? If you retain the sins of anyone, they're retained. So when we retain the the sins of people we hold it against them and doesn't it hurt us the most it hurts us the most if we forgive people their sins they're forgiven for them they're released and let go that's another way to say that so so look at this i i i i i really like this part this is as if we went to, to this verse in Isaiah 61. Remember, Jesus was, was reading Isaiah 61, and he got down to a point and stopped, but he didn't finish reading it. This is what's, what it says next. In verse, the kind of the, the second part of verse 2, it says, And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. Why are they mourning? Because they have sinned. And that it's now forgiven. Because it's retained. Retained by whom? By men. Men have authority here on the earth to do things. This is what Jesus is saying. Um, let me read verse 22 right before this. It says, And having said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive, admit the Holy Spirit. Now, having received the Holy Spirit and being led and directed by him, realize these things. Realize this is your stance. This is where you're at. All right? If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of anyone, they are retained. Now, you can look up through the Word of God where it talks about the vengeance of God. And in Romans, you see there's certain things in there talking about this vengeance. And, and here, 
um, as as we look through the word I'll, I'll bring it up maybe in this Sunday or something this this very topic about the vengeance of God there, there's different things we need to know there's things that are changed from the time Jesus was raised from the dead and here certain things we have to realize are in our control in our mouths okay and then remember how Thomas isn't there and why does he wait eight days to come and and get Thomas out of what he said about about himself and about Jesus how he was gonna believe we, we see this um, we see this that Jesus comes and and doesn't just rebuke him saying hey man you need to get with this why would you say those things this you need to believe see see now you see me now you believe no no no. he comes to him and says reach out your finger here put it t- put it in these holes right shove your hand in my my abdomen here that where i was pierced right put out your hand and place it in my side do not be faithless and incredulous but stop your unbelief and believe now we have this next thing said about us who have believed if if you're you believe that that Jesus was raised from the dead and that God did it and that you you are raised from the dead because he was raised from the dead you are born again you're you're made anew and you made made confession of so remember it has a lot to do with what you believe in your heart and what you confess with your mouth you you can just believe in your heart but will it get you to where your confession will take you because it says you're confession takes you somewhere so realize these things that what you are saying out your mouth really matters and what you're saying about others about holding their forgiven you know forgiving them or not forgiving them matters because as you judge you're going to be judged as as you forgive you're going to be forgiven Ouch. All of those things apply in every one of our lives as disciples of the Lord. Do you see these things? Oh, I believe you do. I believe you do. In verse 29, I just want to read this. Blessed and happy to be envied are those who have never seen me and have believed and adhered to and trusted in and relied on me. Jesus said that. This is what we want to believe. Because because these writings were written down four different Gospels presenting four different views of the same stories. A lot of the same stories. But we see in John's Gospel here, this is an, as a, an eagle flying. We see this, this from a perspective above looking down into these situations and seeing them as if they were being said right then. And as we do that, we take them to ourselves as this is our truth. As we take them as our truth, for the Word of God is true, right? As as we see these things, Look, look what it says here. I'm going to just go ahead and read 30, 31, and 30. That's all there is. 30 and 31. There are also many other signs, miracles, which Jesus performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, recorded, in order that we, we, I know it says you, we may believe. That Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the first begotten from the dead. 
I'm adding those things there so you see it. Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the Son of God, and that through believing and cleaving to and trusting and relying upon him, you may have life through and in his name. It's in and through his name. Do you see it? You, you see these things through who he is. You're doing this through who he is. Galatians 2.20 says something specific there. Let's go and read that. Um, uh, Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. In him I have shared his crucif crucifixion. It is no longer I who live. Who's living then? But Christ, the anointed one, his anointing, the Messiah, lives in me. Remember, we say, Jesus, come and live in my heart. Where does Jesus live? He lives in my heart. Every child knows that, right? And we, we take this to heart. He lives in me, and the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in by adherence to and reliance on complete trust in the Son of God. Do you see that? Who loved me and gave himself up for me. That's every man says that individually. And as we say that, because he would have done it just for any one of us, but the Father had, us, had him do it for all of us, all who will believe, that will take this thought to themselves and act on it and say something. Remember, it, it says, uh, and the redeemed of the Lord say, so, say so. All right. So as we finished up today, we, we want you to see something here. Let me make sure I have everything we have life through and in his name, through who he is. He's the anointed one. He is a spirit, and he's opened up this place that, that is Christ, that sits next to the Father in heaven, that's in the Father, and that the Father is in this place called Christ. And as we take this place in him you see these things remember that god loves you and that we at that church love you and you have a warm seat of welcome come and be part of the body and love on one another together how can you love on the body apart covid was set in a place to separate people to separate up the body of Christ. Divided we fall. Do you see that? United we are a, a force to be reckoned with. We are Christ together. Can we be together and not come together? As we come together, know that Jesus is Lord. Now, take your place as you take his anointing to your world. Bye-bye.